็นผู้กำกับมีระยะอย่างไรในการนำเสนอครับเซน yes uh, thank you for your questions and thank you for coming all the way out here to see it um, I will take your questions in reverse order first the question about uh, the prison scenes um, actually the prison scenes were very uh, well researched I spoke to a lot of inmates to Uh, consider how to depict prison life. So you know, little details like the kind of uh, plucking of armpit hairs in the prison. Uh, these kind of little details, the threading of, of of body hair. This is these are all like uh, from uh, what prisoners actually told me. Um, and you know, when you talk about representations of power, this. What the state represents. These are not considerations that I think about as a filmmaker because I I don't think in an allegorical or symbolic sense. I only think of what the characters would do. So I think of what these four individual prisoners were like. I think of what their relationship is towards the powerful people. Who control them, and then I have a character of a villain who abuses his power. You know, I, I, so that's that's my answer to the question. I try not to concern myself with um, big symbolic uh, meanings. I think I leave the critics, the audience, and uh, film writers to interpret as they will what they want. Um, I stay very much with. The human story, the human characters. Um, as to sexuality, uh, it's simply I, that. I have, oh, I have a, sorry, I have a goldfish memory, so I can do the. Can um, I do the no problem. Yeah, 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 I love goldfish. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, I'm going to forget. I'll call call play. Got it, huh? Because I'll 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 Uh, which some of you might have heard uh, has been struck down just last week in Singapore. Uh, I am a LGBTQ, a straight ally activist, and uh, we have worked since 2007 to try and remove this law. And finally, after 15 years, it was struck down last week. But um, it comes with a bittersweet taste in my mouth because at the same time that Singapore is striking down this law, they are also actively then. Trying to shore up our constitution to ensure that marriage uh, can never be between anybody except a biological man and a biological woman. So the conservatives are really, really—it's it, kind of like a give and take. We'll give you 377A. That means okay, we'll make gay sex between men not a criminal act anymore. But um, you will never be able to um, have uh, equality of marriage. Um, uh, and never have good media representation uh, uh, in the mainstream. It will be very difficult for us to educate our children, our teenagers, um, on sexuality properly, because it will it will always be seen as uh, something that we mustn't talk about. Uh, and I think there's a there's a term that keeps on coming up, um, and uh, it's pro family. It's as if you if you strike down the 377A law. Then that means that a lot of Singaporeans will become non-pro family, uh, and I think that's ridiculous. As if gay people don't have families. Uh, so yeah, it, it is kind of like a two two steps forward, one step back, three steps forward, two steps back kind of a situ situation for me as an activist. A lot of people are saying, "Well, Pam, you know, at least it's one step. It's that one step." But I'm trying to see it that way. It took 15 years to decriminalize this law. Which for 15 years they said they will not use, and then we say if you're not going to use it, then take it away. But it took them 15 years to remove it. So I, I don't know if I have enough energy to wait for another 15 years to go to the next step. So that's where we're at now. Um, the law was really just removed last week, and uh, so the film is very current, <laughs> yes. as it were. Indeed, yes. So we have to carry on, stand tall, don't give up. I try. You have all of our support. <laughs> ครับก็ตอบคำถามนะครับว่าจากกฎหมายนะครับที่ duality again you know I I follow the story um, which is that in the case of Sean he's in prison he's not able to uh, obviously uh, have any sort of like 
sexual contact with uh, anyone uh, other than his inmates. And um, you know, the, the, again, that detail about like holding up the mattress uh, to cover up the person who needs to sort of like get it off, you know, get it out of their system. Those were from uh, testimonies from inmates. Uh, and the, the idea is, of course, he, he's lonely. He misses his uh, girlfriend possibly an ex-girlfriend who he thinks he's still with, but she's ob ob obviously already moved on. So, you know, that sexual relationship may not even be real anymore. So, you know, I decided to depict it as a, as a fantasy. Um, as to uh, the depiction of uh, homosexual uh, intimacy, I think that one of the issues that I take personally with in Singapore is the lack of positive uh, depiction of uh, homosexual, LGBTQ characters, LGBTQ uh, relationships. And so it was very, very intentional to show a very loving, warm, uh, profoundly deep, and even sort of uh, that he could have a boyfriend who was a Christian uh, as well. So I, I wanted that complexity, that nuance, and that kind of at the same time, very, very ordinary sort of love that you always see depicted amongst straight characters, but never ever see uh, amongst LGBTQ characters in the mainstream media. So in that regard, that was very deliberate and um, also uh, great for the story. Yeah. Thank you. This is inspired by the true events. So can you elaborate that a bit? Uh, what event that do you, you pick uh, to make this film? And the second question is, uh, right now, I think Singap uh, he thinks that Singapore has abolished uh, a law against uh, uh, homosexuality. So is this a good sign? What is your opinion on, on this uh, abolition of, of that law? Uh, thank you for your question. I, I will address the first question and then hand the mic to uh, my producer and actress Pam Bui to answer the second. Um, the first question that you asked was about it being inspired by true events, and I think it's important for me to state that it is inspired by true events rather than based on true events. Um, the first inspiration was in 2015, when there was a 16-year-old uh, YouTuber who was uh, charged uh, and sent to prison for making a very rude video that was uh, deemed to be offensive to uh, religious uh, community, uh, particularly to Christians. Now, this real-life 16-year-old blogger, uh, frankly, I was not interested in his life. I wasn't interested in his uh, post because, frankly, I, I didn't really understand what he was saying. Uh, it was kind of nonsensical, and uh, what I found to be important was that it was the first time that they sent a YouTuber to prison. And uh, my thinking at the point was, what if my character was not this uh, uh, kind of like uh, nonsensical person? What if he had a really good reason uh, to express his uh, outrage and his anger? Uh, in other words, the question that came to my mind is, what if the YouTuber made a really, really bad video, but his intentions were good, which is to defend his gay twin brother? So that was like the, the main inspiration. Of course, since then, this was in 2015, between 2015 and now, there have been many other cases of uh, activists, uh, bloggers, uh, lawyers, uh, several other number of people who have been charged or investigated for similar issues of uh, express, you know, expressing kind of their views that are deemed to be uh, either offensive or uh, defamatory or things like that, uh, who have been charged or, you know, or questioned or you know, investigated. So uh, that, you know, it, since then, there have been a lot of other real life incidents that mirror what happens uh, in the film. Um, I'll let you translate. Uh, okay, um, 